made us worth dying for. And today we join with millions of voices around the globe celebrating our risen King. Thank you because you are alive. Thank you for what you, the risen Jesus, did here on Friday. We will not move on as though nothing happened. We've returned to say thank you. Thank you for the testimonies that your children have shared and the ones that we've not even shared yet. We give you the glory. Can the voices just sing crucified one more time? It was crucified. Father, as we go into your word, we ask that you show us Jesus. Let no one return the way they came. Under this anointing, healings happen freely. Chains are broken. Convictions in the hearts of many. Jesus alone is glorified. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Let's try that again. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. If you brought those hands to church, I want you to jam those hands together and give the Lord a big shout. <laughs> Glory to God. Please be seated majestically in God's presence. I want to thank you for joining us for a very, very special Easter celebration. And for those who have become compulsory ushers today, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And I know you know what that means. And we are trusting God that, um, that Jesus is alive. Amen. Glory to God. Let's help me turn to your neighbor and smile. Just give them a smile. Let's try that. Let's turn to your neighbor and give them a smile. Tell them they look amazing. Yeah. I are actually saying the truth. Tell them you look yeah, like you look amazing. My goodness. Is today your birthday? You know, tell them I'm celebrating Jesus. Give them a high five. Tell them happy resurrection Sunday. Glory to God. I, I know there are some people who have to stand because there is no space. But please, in the cause of standing, um, try to not start another service. All right? So be connected as much as possible. Glory to God. I'm just happy today. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I'm just excited. Is it just me? Is it just me? Um, before we dive in, can you please help me celebrate our worship team? Phenomenal. 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 And um, help me celebrate. Where is PCCCCCCCC and PIOGS? Where are they? Help me celebrate them. Help me celebrate them. And please help me give it up for the one and only Olachi. In case you've forgotten, I am a manager, okay? I know people are watching from all over the world. Huh? Is that girl? Can you tell that she's anointed for this? Can you? Can you tell? Yes. So, please, world, hello. Which camera am I looking at? Which one? I am a manager, okay? Okay. And our fear has gone up. Um, just for the records. Glory to God. All right. Um, today is a very special day. And, um, um, a very very special day i want to encourage you to please open your heart to receive god's word will you do that today will you please do that today um i was hearing some voices am i hearing the voices in the physical or in the spirit in the physical all right glory to jesus glory to jesus father open our eyes let us not hear a nice sermon let us receive an impartation of life. Let everything dead experience resurrection power. 
Let the exalted Jesus manifest himself freely in this place. For those of us in the room, for those connecting from around the globe, let there be testimonies of victory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. We are together, okay? Just in case there was a thought of, of leaving me. Glory to God. All right. Um, all over um, KICC, um, today we are preaching the same message. And um, I've noticed that our senior pastor does not like to, generally does not like to rub Greek on our faces. Um, but our theme for this year's Easter is lifted directly from the root language in the Greek. And um, I want everybody who experienced this Resurrection Sunday to remember that word because it is critical. So our conversation today is Tetelestai. Hello. Do you want to try it? Please don't break your tongue in the process, all right? You want to give it a shot? Try it, try it. Some people are saying tetelestai's. They are changing it to English. So can you try it again? Tetelestai. And I know you know what it means. It means it is finished. It is finished. John chapter 19. Let's go into God's word. John chapter 19. And we read from verse 23 in the Passion Translation. John chapter 19 from verse 23. I think we should read responsively. Is that fine? Is that fine? So I will read verse 23. We will read verse 24 until we get all the way to verse 37. Is that okay? Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they divided up his clothes into four shares one for each of them. But his tunic was seamless, woven from the top to the bottom as a single garment. 24. So the soldiers said to each other, don't tear it. Let's throw dice to see who gets it. The soldiers did all of this not knowing they fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garments among them and gambled for my garment. Verse 25. Mary, Jesus' mother, was standing next to the cross. I'm, I'm trying to go on reading, but I want you to, all of the movies we've watched that showed Jesus, you know, beating um, and with something wrapped, those are attempts to dignify. There was nothing dignifying about what Jesus did for you. Do you understand me? He was stuck naked. Hello. Do you understand? Can you imagine what I'm saying? So this was a mother that an angel appeared to. That angel sang. That she conceived by the spirit. That has witnessed miracles and people celebrating. You know one day Jesus was preaching and somebody just shouted in the congregation, blessed is the womb that bore you. On this day that womb did not feel blessed. Because here she was standing by the cross of a naked, stark naked son. Flogged, bleeding, dripping blood. Next to the cross. Along with Mary's sister. Mary, the wife of Cleopas. And Mary Magdalene. I'm sorry, I'll try not to, not to stop us again. 26. 26. Let's go. So when Jesus looked down and saw the disciple he loved standing with her, he said, Mother, look. John will be a son to you. Verse 27. Then he said, John, look, she will be a mother to you. From that day on, John accepted Mary into his home as one of his own family. Sh sh can I say something? Should I quickly say it? This verse is one of the reasons that Bible scholars believe that Joseph, Joseph, the human husband of Mary at this time had already passed on. Are you following me? Are you following me? When the man of the house passes on the responsibility for the home falls on the first son. And now the first son is ashamedly on a cross. So he's handing over his mother so that she will be taken care of. Are you following so far? Are you following? You know there was a, an ancient philosopher who said that there is no one righteous. He 
it was not quoting scripture. Maybe he read scriptures. If I told you the name, you would know the name of the Greek philosopher. He said, there is nobody who is perfect and can every day do perfectly. That was what he said. I'm not saying his name so I don't distract us. And he said, if there was ever one who was perfect, that person will deserve to die on a cross. Yes. Hello. Hello. It was the Romans that invented crucifixion. There are many ways to die. I think there's a show like that. 10,000 10, or 1,000. Crucifixion is unique. It's a unique way to die. It's shameful. The point of the Roman government was that people will watch them and they will tell themselves that whatever people do to die like this <laughs> may it never cross my mind. So when someone is suggesting to you, let us go, you remember the last time there was a public show. But in all of that public show was God working his own divine will because of you. Let me turn to your neighbor again and tell them you were worth dying for. Verse 28, Jesus knew that his mission was accomplished and to fulfill the scripture, please pay attention. It's a short charge, but we're going to emphasize some of these points later. Jesus said, I am thirsty. 29, everybody. A jar of sour wine was sitting nearby, so they soaked a sponge with it and put it on the stalk of Aesop and raised it to his lips. Do you know what it means that they raised it to his lips? Why? Why are they raising it to his lips? I want to see if you are reading and seeing at the same time. Or you are just reading. Where is Jesus now? So how do you get stuff to his mouth? You put it like on a stick, right? And you raise it to him. All right. Verse 30. When he had sipped the sour wine, he said, Tetelestai. That was, that was what he shouted there. My bride. I love this little insertion in this version. It is finished. My bride, I did all of this for you and it was worth it. Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. 31. The Jewish leaders, are we reading together? The Jewish leaders did not want the bodies of the victims to remain on the cross through the next day since it was the day of preparation for a very important Sabbath. So they asked Pilate's permission to have the victim's legs broken to hasten their death and their bodies taken down. Can you see what is going on here? Can you see what is going on here? So what it means is that part of the mechanism of death by crucifixion is the death is slow. There is death by hanging where the moment you put the noose and you drop it, there is... I don't want to take you into the pathophysiology and the anatomy of how that happens but that death can and there's death by firing squad right take a bullet you're gone they are gone this crucifixion one there is no bullet there is no rope you are only anchored to a tree and gravity does the job do you understand what i'm talking about the weight of the person's body is pulling down on the nails they are losing fluid because what i the the, the blood is just dropping little by little and nobody can pass any drip on them and just in case you want to pass drip they be flogged so they, they have lacerations and everything bleeding so at some point the blood will empty at some point they themselves will their hearts will not be that thing medicine has verified it that they pierced the side and there was blood and water it's a real phenomenon of that separation that takes place in the sack that the heart is 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 a known thing i'm just trying not to speak big english the whole essence of all of this was that it was a it was a slow death so that to get these people off the cross we have something doing tomorrow let's extend their death and break their bones they got permission 32 i'm sorry i'll try not to stop us again do you believe it <laughs> no okay you're in the right place 32 <laughs> so the what soldiers broke legs of the two men who were nailed there? How many men were actually nailed there? But how many people's bones did they break? All right. Verse 33. But when they came to Jesus, they realized that he had already died. You know when Jesus says that, I lay my life down. You, it's not like you killed me, even though 
you played a role, but I gave my life for you. It was not your coming to break the legs. You didn't do it. I gave myself. Are you seeing it? Huh. Help me tap your neighbor again. Tell them you were worth dying for. But when they came to Jesus, they realized that he had already died. So they decided not to break his legs. Verse 34. We're going to 37. But one of the soldiers took a spear. Now remember he's up there, right? So you, you, you have to take... Do you know, can you imagine like a javelin with a sharp... Took a spear and pierced Jesus' side and blood and water gushed out. Hmm. Verse 35. Everything here is symbolic. Everything important. This is an anecdote. Whose turn is this to read? My turn? Our turn? Okay, one to go. I, John, do testify to the certainty are there any lawyers? Hello, hold on, hold on, sorry. Are there any lawyers in the house? Can you see what John is doing here? Well, not even, not even yet. You know, later you become a lawyer when the two have become one. Amen? But are there like, like present lawyers is what I mean. O okay, o okay, thank you. Can, you. can you see what John is doing here? This is an attestation to verify the certainty of this witness. That this is not what I heard from somebody who was there. I was, I was at the foot of the cross. I saw and I heard everything. It says, I testify to the certainty of what took place and I write the truth so that you might also believe as I have believed. Verse 36. 36. For all these things happened to fulfill the prophecies of the scriptures. Not one of his bones will be broken. Can you see it? Something that was prophesied how many decades ago. And they will gaze on the one they have pierced. That soldier, when they were like, he's dead already, let's go. There was something rumbling on the inside of that soldier that says, carry that spear. Why was there a spear? Why am I carrying the spear? This man is dead already. Why? Because scriptures were actuated. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Um, because it's a celebration Sunday, um, it has pleased the Lord that today's message will not, it won't be lengthy and it won't be heavy. There are just three things I want to leave you with on this resurrection Sunday. Will you remember the three things? Will you remember the three things? Please, I want to encourage you as you go back home, um, some of us have some plans for some things. Um, I hear there's some plans for us in-house also. Um, so we're going to do all of that. But please, I want you to, to soak in this moment and leave what exactly happened for you. As we gaze, I just saw gaze on my screen, so just to use gaze. As we gaze on the realities of the life that has been made available for us. Three things, and I'll tell you the three. And um, number one, take possession of everything Jesus paid for and died for. Take possession of everything Jesus paid for and died for. Take possession of everything Jesus paid for and died for. If he paid for it, if he died a gruesome, embarrassing, shameful death, the least you can do is to take delivery, take possession of everything he paid for. Number two, make a decision today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not Christmas, not next Easter. Make a decision today. Somebody shout today. I didn't say say, I said shout. Somebody shout today. Make a decision today to live for Jesus. Make a decision today to live for Jesus. Number three, let your life live out God's script. Let your life live out God's script. God's script. You know, as I'm saying this now, someone for the first time is seeing the link between script and scriptures. You know what a script is? You know what a script is? People are playwrights and into movies. You know that there's a script that is being acted out, right? Yeah, so let your life 
live out exactly God's script. Are you there? Are you there? So what is number one? Take possession of what? Somebody say everything. Don't say you need four. Don't say you need two things. Don't say you need one. I'm just, I'm just forgiving. That is good enough for me. No, no, no. It's not good enough for you. If he left his throne in majesty, he became a man. Guys, I, 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 don't, I, I say this a lot, but this is my real. Every time I think about what Jesus went through, every time I picture the insult he took, I'm just like, God, you can, like, we can achieve both at the same time. Do I have any witnesses in the room? Like, Jesus, you can still die, but you don't have to take this nonsense. Can you imagine they were slapping him? They spat on him. And everybody would knew, knew that he could do something about it. But he chose to do nothing about it. Just release like one angel. One. And somebody says rubbish. Another one says rubbish. I'm still going, God, I'm still going to die. You know, I'm, I'm still going to die. But let them know that he, he felt no need to prove a point. You know why? Every point he wants to prove, he wants to prove with your life. And I'm hoping that you accept the responsibility of being died for. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear, no, you didn't hear what I just said. I said, I am praying for someone and I am hoping that today you will accept the responsibility of what it means that somebody died for you. Somebody actually died for you. Somebody took your place. Do you know what it means? You owe them for life. You owe that person for life. Oh yes, you owe them for life. Number one, take possession of everything Jesus paid for and died for. Psalms chapter 103. Psalms chapter 103. I read from verse 1 to 6. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name. Let's move fast. Two. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of his benefits. Don't leave anyone out. Take delivery of everything. Number one, who forgives? Every one of all your iniquities is made forgiveness available for you. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in the, in the mud of your guilt that God is making you pay for something you did when you were five years old. That God is making you bear the brunt and the consequences of something that happened when you were 16. He says that he has forgiven you. He has forgiven you. I feel like there's a need to shout this because there is, there is, there is a way morality makes you feel like let me let me let me let me let me feel some of the guilt it makes me feel like i've done well no man no sir you were guilty i was guilty and now he's forgiving us the real good thing you will do is to accept that forgiveness not to allow yourself feel a little bit more guilt you know some of us enter into some blessings and we're like god i don't deserve this and god is like yes i know i know you don't deserve it that's why I gave it to you. You can like, you can say thank you. Hello. Hello. Imagine someone just walks into this building and says, who's Speedy? Who's Speedy? You know, some other people say, ah, my name just starts from D, you know. You know, it says, Speedy. He said, yesterday I was praying and the Lord just told me to give you this, you know, this check. Told me to just, you know, leave it blank for you to just fill in any amount there. And the first question I will ask is, how much is in the account? You know, let's, let's know what we can write. It says, no, any amount. You know, any amount. There's an endowment in that account. You know, the last we checked, it was about, you know, like $7 billion, you know, but, hello. Some people just woke up now when they had money. They just woke up now. And the person just shows up, signs the check. And I actually get to the bank, and the bank is, is real. And they transfer it into my account, and my account actually, like, receives it. Amen. 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 I now hear that the person who did that told his own family that all of the wealth of this family, you are supposed to inherit it, right? But God said we should keep it somewhere that will tell us who to give it to. Yes. So it's now given to this person called PD. I now hear that that person as children. Do you understand? And the children's school fees are due. Is that a thing? Is it even a thing? And I'm aware. And I'm alive. 
and I have, let's say I've been touching the billions, so there's like six points something left there. Hello. Someone is like, Pete, you know me, it's not six points something that is left. We'll have done, we'll have done things. Hello. But they have to go to school. What should my rightful response be? Your father gave all of your family's inheritance to me. The least I can do is for you to get the, the best education in the world. Right? Right? It says he forgives every one of your iniquities. Heals each one of all your diseases. You know, for some strange reason, Christians can accept that they are forgiven. This healing one, the enemy has, he has choked us. Because the reality of our pain many times is stronger than the revelation of your healing. May I suggest to you that you received healing before sickness arrived. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. Before the diagnosis was made, you know there are medical conditions that are named after people. Do you know? They, they are named after humans that were born, that discovered them. Before there was a discovery of any condition, Jesus paid for each one of your diseases. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, the issue with what Jesus did is that he it, it didn't, it didn't do it and bring it to your laps. He said, it is finished. So you now get up and take possession. Verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit and from corruption? That is part of the package. He redeems. Somebody say, he redeems my life. He buys me back from the pit and from corruption. He beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with his loving kindness and tender mercy. These are the things that the blood of Jesus paid for. Are you ready to take possession of them? He says he satisfies your mouth, your necessity, and desire at your personal age and situation. With good, so that your youth is renewed. Like the eagles, you're strong. Somebody say, I'm strong. Somebody say I'm strong. Somebody say I'm overcoming. Somebody say I'm soaring. You are not, you are, I, I need to hear you. Somebody say I'm strong. It says the Lord executes righteousness and justice. Not for me only. But for all who are oppressed. Help me preach to your neighbor. Tell them take possession of everything that Jesus paid for. Help me ask them. Do you know you are forgiving? Do you feel forgiven? Can you please act like you are forgiven? They're like, you don't know what I did. You don't know what I did. Ah, you don't know what I did. Hello. Whatever you did. Whatever you did. Whatever you did. Did you hear me? Whatever you did, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. You know, some of you the guilt that Satan has packed in your garage. Do you know when some things are packed, you need a towing vehicle to move it. The guilt that the enemy has packed in your garage is not actually what you did. It was what was done to you. But he has convinced you that it was your fault. Can you imagine that? Let me preach to your neighbor again. Tell them you are forgiven. You are loved. You are redeemed. Payment has been made for your healing. Tell them it satisfies you with joy. Satisfies you with good things. Executes justice for you. Can somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1. If I had my way, we will read the old chapter, but there is no time. Isaiah 53 is very strongly prophetic. Every verse. Every verse. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? There, 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 there are scriptures that describe God in what in theology is called anthropomorphic terms. It's just big English. That means human-like terminology. Hello. Theologians love big English. Big English. So why can't you just tell us that they are human-like descriptions of God? You had to give us one very big word. So you begin to hear things like the hand of the Lord. The arm of the Lord. 
like, like we're saying, was it on Friday at the times of refreshing? When God remembers, as though he could forget. Those are human attempts to describe a God who is very much not human. And he says here that as anyone believed us or seen them, oh, this is in the CV. Can you give me in the previous version? He says, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord in scriptures is symbolic of his power. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. For many believers today, they do not have a revelation of the power of God. Many of us believe that the devil is more powerful. And we, we act it out. We actually fear the devil more than we fear God. If they tell you that, that place, that building, ah, hmm. Mm, that building. They opened the door one day. I saw it. What did you see? <laughs> it was dark and black. There was blood dripping from the ceiling. The, the deity they worship, they're dangerous. Ah, when, when humans are going there, you see them with trepidation. But then they come into God's presence. Into the one who created everything, including the blood that is dripping in their shrine. And say, let's just honor him. Let's acknowledge his presence. And they're like, oh, <laughs> I have a notification, a snap. You know, and they're like, <laughs> at the king of kings and showing reverence for empty demons. Hello, are you there? It says, who has believed our report? May I suggest to you that you will not see the power of God until you believe his report. Give it to us in the CV. It says, has anyone believed us or seen the mighty power of the Lord in action? That the power is there is already settled in eternity. The question is, will you see that power in action? If you will see it in action, then you need to get your place, yourself to a place where you now begin to believe. Believe the report. Believe his word. If indeed PD is saying that payment was made for my healing before I fell sick, then let's do a bit of backdating. Hello? Anybody ever felt like backdating before? Uh, you will just be like, ah, if I could turn back the hands of time. Has anybody ever felt that way before? You made a very silly, dangerous mistake. You are, you are, <laughs> you are ripping the adversary. You're like, God, can we just flip time out a bit? Time won't permit me to share the details of your personal story. I think it was 2009 or 10. I can't remember. I was in med school and it was time for our clinical electives. People were applying to Oxford, Harvard, going to all of these places. I knew, hello, can I be transparent with you guys? Before I got into the Lagos University, I tried to go school abroad. Some of you know my stories, right? How I fasted and prayed and the, the, the counselor just smiled. <laughs> no. <laughs> I went back to the secret place. Said, Father! And God saw my future. He said, my son, I love you. No. Three solid times they stamped my passport. So, where was I at the Lagos University? So, when my friends say, oh, you know, I'm just going to apply to this school for electives. I'm just going to apply. I didn't even feel like going to any embassy. <laughs> I said, please, I'm not going back. I'm not, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there. So, I had a friend that was like, oh, let's go to the UAE. That, there's a John Hopkins University there. And there's a University of Vienna University there. Let's go there. So, we applied and we went. I didn't pray about it. I was not interested in praying. When I prayed, I didn't get visa. Maybe if I pray now. So I did, I'm, not, I, I'm not going to pray about this. And all the signs we are lining, you are out of line. You are out of line. The friend who said he was going to come and pick me from the airport, as we're about to board the flight, he just said, I'll never forget. He said, I'm taking a road trip to Muscat. My goodness. I said, where is Muscat? <laughs> I went to go and check. Oh, man. I said, what is this? So he's going to pick us from the airport. We got to the airport, Dubai International Airport. Everywhere was looking bling. Oh, amazing. As we, it was August. August. Hello. Somebody say August. As we stepped out of the airport, I said, Jesus. Ran back inside. It was like they were cooking outside. Place was hot. <sighs> we're asking, where do they used to take bus? We need to get to this place. Are you interested in my story? Uh, they said this time. As we got into the bus, bread, man, I, I kid you not. Few as we got into the highway, we were seeing fine places. When we stopped seeing fine places, then we knew we were outside Dubai. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was a smell. Those of us who were coming from Nigeria, we know the smell, but they don't know the smell. They don't know the smell. I said, God, what is happening here? It's, to, it's today the day. 
And then the Spirit of God said, not today. Before we knew it, smoke, smoke, before we knew it, fire. In the middle of nowhere, the bus was in flames. We came out in that heat, packed our things, and I was just there. They put out the fire, called the bus company, sent another bus. Eventually, we got to the place where the university was. And whilst we were there, they told us, oh, welcome, you guys came during Ramadan. You know, we are fasting. But for those who are not fasting, the kitchen will be open early in the morning. You pack some food and this. I was vexed. Like, what's all this? What's wrong with this journey? This journey is not journeying. What's going on? It was right there that I, I developed a health condition that plagued me for years. So every time I felt, you know when you're supposed to, you know, you know there's healing available for you. But you cannot even ask for the healing. Because you're like, God, my hand is involved in this thing. So as I want to pray, I'll feel the guilt. I'll just be, God, can we just fast track? I won't go. I'm not going there. I won't even apply. I won't go. For as many of us who have felt like reversing the hands of time, I want you to know that before that thing happened, provision was made for you. Are you going to believe it today? Don't just join everybody to sing Easter. Easter is alive. I want you to take possession. Let me tap your neighbor. Say, take possession. Believe this report so that that mighty power can come into action in your own life. Of what use? Of what use is power when it is not in action? Of what use is a bank account? Some people have died in poverty only for, for the family to realize that they had money in the account. And that's how many believers are. There's grace in your account. And you are living as though you are not the son of a king. As though you are not the daughter of a king. Everybody's crying, you are crying. Everybody's tired, you are tired. Everybody's stressed, you are stressed. And God is saying, no, you are my son, you are my daughter. Will you believe my report? Make a decision to live for Jesus. Make a decision to live for Jesus. You know, I heard a, a question one day. It is, let me not pass any judgment. Let me just say it. Someone said, I did, not, I did not say I wanted to be born. I did not say I wanted to be alive. I was just on my own. And then they said, I sinned. In Adam, and I need a savior. So now Jesus has come to save me and I now need to believe him. Like, I, I don't even know, like when did all of these things happen? Has anybody ever felt like that before? <laughs> he's a very, somebody's like PD, that, that person asking must be a Gen Z. Because he's a very Gen Z kind of way of thinking. You said Adam sinned. I was not there. That's the main, that's, that's hello, hello. That is the real fallacy of that thinking. For you to think you were not there. That's, that's where your thinking is wrong. Because you were there. Uh, they're like, PD, prove it to me. Prove it, pro PD, prove it to me that I was there. Where were you? You were there. Hmm. If I even tell you where you were, you will not... Hmm. You in particular. Somebody said we were there. It was all of us. Because we point if not for he ate apple. I'm now suffering. He ate apple. Hello. If somebody can eat apple and you are suffering, then how about the one that you can look up to that died so that you will not. Why will you want to stay with the apple and suffering when you can look to the cross and receive life? Please choose where you are looking at. Because it says it was mankind. God made mankind. Adam means mankind. All of us bundled into him. Like the sons of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 4. He said, guys, pack your bags. You are now slaves. Imagine the boys saying, well, Adam, you know, I'm just trying to picture them. You know, like beards. They have beards. They have their phone. You know, like that. I'm like, come, we are going now. Like, I don't know. I don't know when dad signed, signed the document. So, I, I have no part in it. And the slave master, I say, you know, I have no part in it. <laughs> Carry your bag. Let's go. Your father signed you off. That's, see, I'm saying you were sold. We were sold. If you speak English, speak French, you, are, you, you were sold. But somebody has bought you back. Somebody has made full payment. Somebody said full payment. He didn't use a credit card. He paid full, full. We do apologies to those using credit cards. Amen. <laughs> You use credit card, you've not paid to. Hey, it's not a tele, it told <laughs> ten tele. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Okay, like, can we can we can we go on? Can we go on? Um, it's a good day to celebrate Jesus. I don't want anybody feeling like happy. 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians 2, 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In literature, they call this a paradox. You have to choose one of two things. It's either you are dead or what? You are what? You are alive. But the believer lives in that paradox of being dead and alive. It says, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can you see this is a statement of gratitude of somebody who realized that somebody died for me. Somebody died for me. Part of the realities of the medical profession is sometimes you see people who are on a list. I've heard it before that somebody's on a list. Do you know what it means? A transplant list. Yeah. So maybe they need a new lung or liver or kidney. Those are the commonly transplanted organs. Even though there are some people in some parts of the world, they need a brain transplant. Amen? Amen? We, we just had to shoot a few, you know, just like, amen. But they don't know they need to be on a list, but it is well. Hello? Can you, can you stay with me? Can you stay with me? And there are people who are called life donors. Have you heard of life donors before? So there are people who, who um, especially if you have an Ontario health card, you probably have opted in if you don't know that your organs can be donated. Yeah, that's the policy. There are com countries that have opt-in and opt-out policies. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some other countries use opt-out. Hello? That's why it's good to read things before you sign them. Because you have license. I know you have license. I have health card. But you don't know you, you signed something else in the process. <laughs> Are you there? Are you there? Imagine that somebody donated their lung for you. Somebody say lungs. They gave you one. They said you can breathe with one. Or imagine that somebody donated one kidney for you. And you get to see the person every day. Can you picture it? Can you picture it with me? You get to see the person every day. My wife was telling me the story of a of of a of a couple. Husband and wife. I think, I'm not sure if it was the wife that needed or the husband. But fortunately, the spouse was a match. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not like you have to be compatible. And the, the husband, like, he, he was giving cute. Hello. Do you know what it means that you wake up every morning? You, some of you say, you know, I can give my heart, but you cannot give any. I can give my kidney. But literally, this person has your other kidney. You're like, you know, that's my heart beating in your heart. Say, aww. Not, it's not nice. Hmm. May, may, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. He has healed all our diseases. Amen. But the point I'm making is there's a kind of indebtedness you feel if it was just a part that was given for you. How much more when it was a complete death? Do you know what, do you know what Paul is saying here? Paul is saying, I had plans. I had timelines. I had ambitions. I had everything. He says, but I came into a reality that someone died for me. My reasonable response is to pack everything I intended to do and just ask him, if you were alive, what were you planning to do? Do you understand that question? Jesus, if you were living in Ontario, Canada, what were you planning to do? You died so that I can be alive. The least I can do is to do what you would have been doing. And Paul here came to that reality. He thought he was living for God, persecuting people. He went to the best law school, got an amazing degree. He was in the creme de la creme of society, had a PhD emeritus, and he was living the life until he came to the, to the realization that all of this thing is dung. And for many people, it takes us time for us to... Many people, this kind of thoughts is only at a... It's like a service of songs, um burial, that's when a lot of people actually think. Many people don't think. It's when you're at a burial ground. You not, you're not be reading. You went to Harvard. Uh, it was awarded to this. And you're looking at the person you're talking about. He got this. It was the first 
internationally acclaimed. Ariana artists. Grande here. And in just that moment, all the qualifications are worthless. And Jesus is saying there's a worthy way to live life. To live for Jesus. I am hoping somebody will get this year's Easter message. That true life is living for Jesus. Everything we are chasing after in the, in the, I don't even want to say in the eternal scheme, in the human scheme, in even on earth, house, wife, children. Somebody saying, Pete, it's easy for you to say. You know, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just the way then, back in the days when we were single, married people would say, you single people, honor the Lord with your bodies. Honor the Lord with your bodies. Single people say, leave that thing. Leave that thing. Honor the Lord with what? Then somebody will now come to church and say, Jesus is coming soon. He say, say, hey, Jesus is coming soon. You are telling me to honor the Lord. So are you saying, <laughs> are you saying that we will not experience this thing and Jesus will just come? Ah, no, they've done us, they've done us, they've done us strong. They've done, ah, the devil has done us dirty. He, he has made mundane things seem valuable. That you, you, some people say, Jesus, wait. Have you heard it before? Jesus, wait, let me marry first. Jesus, wait, let me have children. I'm telling you, if you ever have a vision of heaven, you will throw away marriage. You didn't know what I just said. Do you know in heaven there is no marriage? Do you know there is no marriage in heaven? You, you didn't know what I just said. As much as I love my wife, I will see her in heaven. I'll just be like, hi, and I'll continue worshiping Jesus. <laughs> Where is she anyways? Amen. 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 But seriously, we we have affection for one, love for only one. There will be record. I believe there will be recognition on that resurrection morning. I believe there will be people who will be happy to see saints who have crossed on the other side that we will see on that glorious morning. But that's all it's going to be. Our love, our affection will be for one, and many will wish somebody told me to live for Jesus. And God has sent somebody on this. 2024 Resurrection Sunday celebration. Leave for him. Pack your plans. Can I, can I tell you the biggest life secret that you may ever hear? The moment you make a decision to live for Jesus, you will discover that his plans for you are more ambitious than your own plans. That's what some of us figured out. Because, boy, I had big plans. I remember once I stumbled on something I had written when I was in first year of medical school. I had five-year goals, ten-year goals. By here, I'm going to be doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this. Ah, it was, it, was, it was tight. You feel me? Do you understand what I'm saying? The plans were tight, but God had tighter plans for me. Because if I had, if I had done that, maybe I'll be happy and my family will be proud. And that's all. And God said, No. I didn't put all of this investment for two families to be happy. I've, 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 I've offered you so that you can impact nations. Nations. It was last week Sunday at the Royal Hangout. We we're talking a, a little bit about taking on last names and legacy. My legacy is not that there's a child that can carry my name. There are people who, they, if they had their way, they would tell their children not to bear their name. Those children have brought shame and embarrassment. And there are those that transgenerationally, even without children, their legacy lives on. Somebody say, make a decision to live for Jesus. Can we see this in the Passion Translation and in the CV? We need to move faster. It says, my old identity has been co-crucified with the Messiah and no longer lives. The nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as what? We live in union as what? He says this new life is empowered. Many people are looking for empowerment. It's because you are looking for empowerment for your own life. The spirit of God does not empower your plans. He empowers God's plans for you. Your struggle can end today. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But many of us don't like it. We want to get to the end of the road to now discover there's nothing there. You now, it's okay to humble yourself today. 
You don't have to get to the rock bottom and drill, drill oil, drill magma. Life has shown you pepe. You now run to Jesus. Say, Jesus, now you can make a decision today. Somebody say today. Let's see it in the CV. I just like the, the first line of the CV. It says, I have died. I have died. And as we're saying at the stewards meeting this morning, this your your dying is every day. You die today, you make a decision to die again tomorrow. Some of us are too alive. We are too alive. You, you hear everything. You see everything. You feel everything. Every statement has meaning, including the one that has no meaning. You read meaning into it. They looked at me this way. Maybe it is perhaps because it was, hello, find peace in Jesus. People have lives. And I've noticed many people who complain about haters, 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 haters. Bro, there's nothing to hate on. Go and live a life. And guess what? If you are living, haters is proof that you are making progress. Let there be something to hate on. See, you are talking about me. Give them books to write. Do you understand? Volume 1. Amen. So, number one, take what? Hey, they've left me. They've left. Number one, take what? Number two, make a decision. Number three, which I believe is the crux of today's message, and now that my time is gone, is let your life match God's script. Do you believe that God wrote something about you before you were born? Do you believe it? Are you interested in knowing what he wrote and leaving it out? If you read, hello, can you follow now? Can everybody follow now? We're literally rounding up. If you read the account of the resurrection in Matthew, you read the account of the resurrection in Mark. You read the account of the resurrection in Luke. And you read the account of the resurrection in John. You will notice that the way all of them capture what happened in those last final hours slash final minutes slash final seconds and moments, a bit just different. Are you there? So Matthew tells us, it was there and he shouted, Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabak, Tani. And then he gave up his spirit. That's Matthew. Okay. Mark shows up and says, he said, Eli, 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 Lamak, Sabak, Tani. And after a while, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And Dr. Luke shows up and gives us another interesting dimension of it. John is the one that gave us the nitty gritty details that the Son of God was on the cross. He says, everything I have done was to leave out God's script. And then he scanned the script chore and found that it was written concerning him. Do you understand what I'm saying? That they gave him vinegar to drink. So he said, I am thirsty. You are not following me. You are not following me. From his birth to the last moment, scripture had been followed to the letter. So he was saying like, what is left? Ah, what a life. I am praying that on my, on my, on my dying bed, this is when I'm a great, 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 hello devil. Devil, don't get excited. Not anytime soon, okay? All right. If Jesus tarries, I'll just look at what else is, what else is written in that script. Do you know there are people that lived this life and they said, eh, I fought a good fight. We've done it. Everything. We've done it. We've done it. It says, my real achievement, dong. My average certificate, dong. All the accolades that are on my walls, dong. But what really counts? I finished the course. I lived this, I lived this life of Jesus. I lived it well. Can you imagine Jesus standing there? What else was written concerning me? He said, they gave you something to drink. Ah, he said, I'm thirsty. What were the odds that somebody would not rush to the store to go and buy water? He said what was written was not water. And they found it there. It was just there. What were the odds that somebody put it there? What were the odds? Everything to the letter. Everything to the letter. That will be hung on the cross. The Jews were reckoned to be experts at death by stoning. That one, they invented it. The Romans were the ones dead by crucifixion. But Jesus was not Roman. So do you understand why the Jewish leaders were pushing him to the Roman leaders? Because they wanted execution on a cross. Why did they want him executed on a cross? Why couldn't they just say blasphemy will stone you? 
the way they're going to stone that woman. Because it was not in scriptures. See, if you can get this, it will give you a big audacity. That the doctors will tell you something and you say, thank you, doctor. That, that one is not in the scriptures. You don't understand what I'm saying? That one is not part of the script. No, not me. It's not written concerning me. It says, the scripture says, I will die. Yes, we are proved. But the scripture says, they will not break his bones. You cannot come and now say, you feel like breaking. It was not written. I'm saying nothing is permitted to happen to you outside of the script. Uh, I'm praying that the import of this will land on you. I am praying that the import of this will land on you. I am praying that the import of this will land on you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 to verse 10. Very quickly, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 to verse 10. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body. Somebody say, a body. You have prepared for me. Verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. My goodness. And we are doing this for Jen. You, you know the biggest irony of this resurrection story. After Jesus died, that veil, that store, they got Taylor, stitched it together, and they continued sacrifices. When the real sacrifice had been sacrificed. That's religion. What God has moved on from, we pack there. And we say we die there. He says, but God had no pleasure in all of those things. He had no pleasure in all of those things. Can you please put our scriptures back? He had no pleasure in all of those things. Verse 7, then I said, behold. Uh, let me bring it up. I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Guys, this is the definition of life. This is the definition of life. Any other thing anybody tells you, they are, they are massaging a mirage. They are, they are, they are, do you know when you are trying to mold smoke? Can you see this, Ace? Can you see it? Can you imagine me saying, wow, beauty, I'm going to be great. I, I now bring a makeup, makeup kit. I bring out brush, mascara, eyeliner, fade. I want to, I want to fade the smoke. I want, to, I want to make it look more beautiful. That is what our futile human attempts look like when we want to live outside of Jesus. It says the essence of your body the reason why you are giving body is so that he can do his will. The reason why you are here is to live his life. To do your will. To do your will. Oh God. Previously saying sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire. You had no pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Verse 9. Then he said, Behold, I have come. To do your will, O oh God. He takes away the first. That he may establish the second. Verse 10. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Somebody say once and for all. Psalms 40 verse 7 and verse 8. You know, the author of Hebrews was quoting Psalms 40. And when you go to the Psalms 40, you will see something there for you. Then I said, who is speaking here? This is the psalmist, right? Right. Right. Are they still in church? Or have, have they gone home? Are they already, you know, on the, on the, on the, is, is it dinner table or lunch table? Lunch table. Then I said, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. Can you see the difference here from what the psalmist is saying? He says, I delight. I delight to do your will, oh my God. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my God. And your law is within my heart. The script is written in there. Do you know many times people know when they are stepping out of, of God's plan? Hello. Do you know many times we know you are even telling the man of God to pray for you. But inside your heart, inside your heart, you already know. You already know. My prayer for you this resurrection season is that you will delight to do his will. Do you know what it means to delight? That means you will like what he wants for you. I'm not saying you will completely just be like, oh my God, 
He wants me to have a fairy tale. No, it's not a fairy tale. Sometimes you will see a knowledge of it and you will cry. But as you are crying, you are delighting. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You're like, God, what a privilege, but why me? Why me? God, I'm okay where I am. I'm okay where I am. She says, Abraham, it dwells in tents. It dwells in tents. Someone that rich, it dwells in tents. <laughs> Have you thought about it? Do you know why he, why he dwells in tents? Because he knows God will say, move. I have come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, oh God. Oh, there's a script for each and every one of us. I have come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, to do your will, oh God. I will. Oh, oh, your will, I will do your will. Oh. If I may, please let me request that you rise on your feet. And I will do as we bring the service to a close. Oh, oh do your will, I will. Oh, can all of us sing together? I will live for you. If you died for me, the least I can do, I will and I, I will, will do your every day, every hour. Do your will. I will. I don't want to please men. I don't want people clapping for me. When everyone is saying you're out of line, I will. I will do Whatever may come my way, I'll try, I'll fall, I'll fall, I'll fall. No matter, no matter, whatever may come my way, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow. I'll follow. Make a decision to live for Jesus. Take possession of everything he paid for. Let your life match his script exactly. That was the life of Jesus. Everything he did to the last drop. And then when he said, it is finished. The real question is, what is finished? He's saying, everything written concerning me accomplished. Now you're empowered. And you too, you can live a life that is in perfect sync with God. The beauty of this is many of us, we've, we've started this journey already. And we're like, is it too late to return to his will? No, it's never too late. You can make a decision for him today. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow because All fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I he holds know. your future. Oh, I hope you will believe it. I hope you will believe it. Life is worth. Life is worth. Oh, living just. You know, the devil has a way of, um, this is why the Spirit of God is cautioning me in this moment. The devil has a way of weaponizing messages like this. That that thing you are suffering is, is, is part of God's plan for you. Hello. You don't get the idea of the script from the devil. You get the details from the word. You hear what I just said? So, I, I can boldly announce to you that God's, God's plan is for you to get married and for that marriage to be happy. Why can I say that? Because I have found this in scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So his plans for you are good. Can, can, can you say it? God's plans for me are good. They are not evil. God's plans for me are good. 
He has a bright future and a hope for me. He's bringing me into a glorious future and he's made full payment for it. Come on, just raise your voice in thanksgiving and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for choosing me when I looked like an obvious, an obvious no-brainer, no not worth choosing. Thank you. Oh, is this how you say thank you? I want it to come from your heart. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You chose me. Even my friends won't choose me today. My family might not choose me today. If they told the Prime Minister to list critical citizens in Canada, I might not even pop up on the radar. But I was worth everything to you. You chose me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, because you rose again triumphantly. Thank you, Jesus. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know This life is worth living A living I think today is a beautiful day For someone to make a decision for Jesus I think today is a beautiful day For someone to rededicate their lives You've been running the show Living your own script bullying heaven to authorize your own plans today is a good day to say I surrender to Jesus I say yes to his life I say yes to his life I say yes to his life if you're under the sound of my voice and you know Jesus does not live in you by his spirit I didn't say you don't go to church I didn't say you don't have a Christian name I didn't say you've not been baptized I am saying that you know that Jesus does not live in you by his spirit today is a good day to make that decision and as our senior pastor would have us do, I want to kindly ask that all of us, we say it with those who are doing it for the first time. But before we do, if you are in the room, I know there are many who are watching online, many who will watch in the future. And life suddenly has meaning. Because the meaning of life is in living for Jesus. That's really the essence of life. If you are that person, you are saying, Pastor, I want to start with Jesus. For some, is I want to start again. For some is I want to start for the first time. I want to live on his terms, not on my terms. I've tried my way. I've struggled. I'm, I think I'm done by now. I want to embrace his love. I want to embrace his life. If Jesus will allow himself to be naked on the cross, to take all of that for you, I don't think it is too much for you in the congregation of saints to raise your hand. I say, I am the one making that decision today. You know, he said one of the Roman soldiers, after he saw the way this man was crucified, ah, he said, indeed, indeed, ah, no. This was the son of God. He came to a realization. You can come to that realization today. I say, indeed, Jesus is the way. Indeed, Jesus is the truth. Indeed, Jesus is the life. No shame here. No shame here. I just want to see your hand. If you're that person, if you're that person, I want to know that we are praying with people in the room. If you are that one, I'm scanning the room. I know my visibility is not the best because of the light. But if you are that person saying, I want to make a decision for Jesus, I want to rededicate. I, I sense I need to start anew. If you are that one, just wave so I can see you. So I can see you. If you are that person in the room, so I can see you. And if there are those watching online, so I can see you. Oh, there's some. Okay, okay. God bless you. Even though I can't, I'm being told there's a hand, even though I can't see clearly, but trust me, you can see. I'm asking you to raise it, all right, so that everyone will record it as a witness. And you can see you. I still can't see the hand, but it can see you. And as many who are also raising their hands that I can't see, it can see you. As many online that will raise their hands and I can't see you, it can see you. Church together, let's join them and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for taking my place in the grave. I believe you are alive today. I ask that you live in me. I ask that you live through me. And I receive the grace to live every day for you and for your glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Congratulations. Can you help me celebrate Jesus? Help me celebrate Jesus. This is the essence. This is why he died. The Son of God became a man so that the sons of men 
can become the sons of God. That's the mystery of resurrection. Glory to God. Glory to God. Please help me just make that keyboard very loud. I am done. I am done. I am leaving. But I'm on the stage. So am I really done? Am I really done? I just love to make this shout every Easter. It's, it's personal. Can, will you join me to shout? Will you join me to shout? Can you, can you take the key down a bit for me? So that I do not bust my pipes. Who is the person? Guilty as charged. Help me tell her that she's forgiven. Tell her that she's redeemed. Tell her to take possession of everything Jesus prayed for. And up from the grave he arose. Anybody knows it? With a mighty trial for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. And he reigns forever in the saints today. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Help me want to find people. Tell them your Jesus is alive. Look like it. Act like it. Your Jesus is alive. Look like it, act like it, your Jesus is alive. Sunday. I've come in for you today. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've been blessed by the sermon. And if you would love to be a part of what God is doing in our midst, feel free to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. To be a part of the giving, you can give our email at info, I-N-F-O, at kicccanada.ca or through our website at www.kicccanada.ca slash donate. God is doing amazing things in our midst and we look forward to seeing you soon. Remember you are a champion. God bless you.